All right, so we are going to talk about um, a three different types of poems. Usually in class, typically what I would have you guys do, it, I'd have you work as a group uh, with the people at your table. I assign you a type of poem. I have you research it. I have you create a um, Google slide presentation of you, you know, describing um, how is this poem structured? What needs to be included? And you have to give us an example. Um, but because we can't do that, I wanted to focus on um, three types of poems that I am going to have you guys write um, within the next few days. Okay. Um, I did. I did only pick three because again, I don't want this to be a burden to you um, with the workload. So the first type of poem, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have uh, heard of a haiku poem before. Maybe you've had to write one. They are pretty simple. Okay, so I will require you to write one. But if you are like, heck no, I want to write more, please do. I love to read poetry. I lo would love to read your poetry. So a haiku is a Japanese poem of 17 syllables in three lines of five, seven, and five syllables, traditionally evoking images of the natural world. So what the heck does that mean? So we have a poem that has 17 syllables. Syllables are how many sounds we can find in a word. So for example, think of your name. If I did Melissa, okay, I always clap it out so you'll hear it. Melissa. Okay, so I have three syllables in my name. Bailey, Bailey. Okay, so I have two syllables there. If I did Marvin, Marvin. Okay. If I did Washington, Washington. Okay. We have three. So you might need to get some practice with syllables before you write your haiku poem. So in a haiku, haiku poem, there are only three lines. Okay. Three lines. You can see in the, the poem I have in the example, there are three lines. In line one, you will have five syllables. Line two, you will have seven syllables. Line three, you will have five syllables. If you were to add those up, it equals 17. So it's only 17 syllables throughout the entire poem. Typically, haikus are about nature, and I am going to have you guys keep that in mind. Um, there are other haikus that people don't write about nature, but for the sake of you know the, the authenticity of a haiku poem, I do want you guys to be able to write one about nature. So here's an example of one. Summer. Sun shining on me, relaxing on the hot sand, enjoy an ice cream. So you'll notice I have three lines. Line one has five syllables. Sun shining on me. Line number two is seven. Relaxing on the hot sand. And then five syllables. Enjoy an ice cream. Okay, so five, seven, five, and it is about something in nature. I would say that, you know, a season or being outside with the sun and the hot sand, that is all evoking nature. Okay. So if you have any questions on haikus, please feel free to email me. Okay. Then we have a tanka poem, which is very, very similar to a haiku, to a haiku poem. Okay. So the idea of having the syllables, um, the, the set number of syllables is the same. Okay. This one's just a little bit longer. A tanka. The Japanese tanka is a 31 syllable poem. So last time with a haiku, we had three lines, 17 syllables. This one is 31 syllables. Traditionally written in a single unbroken line. A form of waka, Japanese song or verse. Tanka translates as a short song and is better known in its five line, five, seven, five, seven, seven syllable count form. So again, if you understood a haiku, tankas will be a breeze for you. A tanka poem has five lines, okay? In those five lines, line one has five syllables, line two has seven syllables, line three has five syllables, and lines four and five has seven syllables. Now with these, um, they don't have to relate to nature. You guys can write this about whatever you want. I want you to have the freedom to do that. Okay, so I'm going to read you the example. So first of all, I want you to look at the structure. We have one, two, three, four, five lines, okay? Line one has five syllables, line two, seven, and so on. So line one, pretty colored trees that are orange, red, and yellow in the autumn, an old barn by the water with a white fence around it. So if we were to go back through and we were to clap this out, each line has the number of syllables that are next to it. So line one, Pretty colored trees has five syllables. Line two, if we went through and reread that, that would have seven syllables. Line three has five. 
line four has seven syllables, and line five has seven syllables. Okay, so very similar to a haiku, it's just pushing you to do two more lines and add some more syllables, okay? Any topic you want. Then we get to a free verse poem, and I love free verse poems. I think that they are um, so wonderful because this is the type of poem where people really are able to evoke their strong thoughts and their strong emotions in a productive way. Okay, so free verse poems, they are free. Uh, there, it does not follow any rigid rules of rhyme, pattern, or meter. It doesn't have to have a certain number of syllables. It um, doesn't have to have a certain number of lines. However, a great free verse poem will have some type of rhythm. It will also use poetic devices such as metaphors, similes, personification, onomatopoeia, et cetera, the things that we talked about um, in the last presentation. Okay, so a free verse poem. You guys will write a free verse poem, and I, the only requirement that I'll have for you is that I want it to be at least five lines long, okay? Five lines because, I mean, you can write a two-line free verse poem, but anybody can do that. Right, we have somebody in, in kindergarten that could probably do that. So I'm gonna challenge you guys to have at least five lines. The more the better. And think about what you're going through right now. If you have a, a super strong emotion or a thought, or if there's something that is weighing heavy on your heart, put it into words in a free verse poem. Okay. It's a great outlet for stress. Here's an example of a free verse poem called After the Sea Ship by Walt Whitman, who is a famous poet. After the sea ship, after the whistling winds. After the white gray sails taut to their spars and ropes. Below a myriad, myriad waves hastening, lifting up their necks, tending in ceaseless flow towards the track of the ship. Waves of the ocean bubbling and gurgling, blithy prying, prying. Waves undaunting, waves liquid, uneven, emotionless waves. Toward that whirling current, laughing and buoyant with curves where the great vessel sailing and, ta and tacking displaced the surface. So this poem is talking about somebody that is out to sea, obviously. And I think that it's beautifully written that the imagery that is evoked here is just wonderful. They talk about the whistling winds. So right there, we have some personification, okay? We also have some alliteration right there. You see the whistling winds, okay? So the wind is being personified by saying that it's whistling. Okay, we also have the white gray sails that's appealing to our sense of sight with that. Um, and then it says the myrad, so it's the, the part of the boat lifting up their necks. Okay, so uh, that idea of, of, you know, that visual piece. Um, then we go down, ways of the ocean bubbling and gurgling. Okay, so even that right there, we have that onomatopoeia. Okay, the sounds that the waves could make. Um, and even the word choice here, okay, we have uh, emulous, um, the whirling, the laughing, and buoyant, okay? So those words that we're using um, really, really help to own in on um, a free verse poem. Using those things throughout just makes it so beautiful, right? And again, poetry is meant to be read out loud. So when you start working on your free verse poem, whatever topic you choose, after you're done writing it, read it out loud to yourself. Okay, hear how it sounds because when you read it out loud, just like I had you guys do with your um, descriptive essays, you'll be able to tell whether you think it makes sense. And also when you read it out loud, you should be able to feel the emotion, okay, that you're trying to express. So if you have any questions on the three types of poems that we've talked about, please feel free to email me, no hesitations. All right, guys, so make sure you check the agenda um, for tomorrow to make sure that. Um, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. All right. Bye.